What's up, everybody? Round two of this live stream because last night YouTube deleted the live stream I did because of me streaming all the songs. And I'm just cleaning geckos today, and I really love connecting with you guys and showing off geckos. So I am going to just do that exact same thing today, cleaning, showing off geckos, answering your guys' questions. So I'm going to get my little gecko tub ready here plus all of our like european and asian breeders they always want to get a live stream in and so we're gonna get them a live stream in now so let's clean geckos no music this time and i'm gonna look on my computer over here to see um to see what questions you guys have. Um, Esteban, Reptile Links. Serena, uh, Jelly Bean is doing great, Serena. I was just checking all the females, uh, yeah, all the females today to see if any of them are re ovulating because sometimes that happens, or just to make sure I didn't miss any eggs. We're doing good. I checked on Jelly Bean. She's good. Yeah, that's true. Um, so. Last night we did a live stream and the live stream got banned by YouTube because I was playing music and I loved it. I love playing music. We were able to make a lot of people happy playing music, uh, doing song requests. But um, I didn't realize that YouTube would ban the video. I knew that they would demonetize it. I knew I wouldn't get paid for ad revenue, which is not much, but I'm just saying I wouldn't, I was okay with that. But banning the video and taking it away I'm not okay with that because then other people can't watch it. So I was like, okay, well, let me just do another live stream and I'm cleaning right now. So might as well. So, um, this new technique that I got going on where I show the geckos here, I think it's really cool. A lot of people seem to like it. So we're going to do this technique. We're going to show geckos and live stream all at the same time. So here's one of our white and yellow bold stripes, hyper exanthic, hyper xanthic, I should say, not axanthic, because axanthic would take away all color, whereas um, hyper xanthic adds in color. So we will see. We do have a lot of Asian and European breeders that like um, keepers that would like to attend our streams. So I'm hoping today can at least accommodate them a little bit. Yeah, Reptile Expos are super cool. The Circle Project is doing good. My main goal, honestly, for the Circle Project was the Black Knights. Um, and naturally this year, I made some Black Knight crosses uh 50 black knight 50 percent snow crosses and they actually have circles so i've began to like sell some of my normal circle project stuff and um whoa this gecko made a getaway here so yeah circle project's doing good um I, i'm still keeping a lot of those geckos I did decide to put some Circle Project Echoes up for sale, but not all of them, of course. Let's see if we can move that over more. Yeah. Trying to find the best... spot for this gecko here you guys let me know like how you like to view the geckos uh so we are using these disposable cups now too they are really really cool i don't have any red diamond the the next tangerines this one made a getaway again 
So the next tangerines that are on my... Now, if you guys missed it, we did buy a $1,000 tangerine leopard gecko, and I'm pretty happy with that leopard gecko. Um, but of course, with any collection, you want to add new lines and new blood in, right? So the next tangerines that are on my radar to consider is... Um, is it is from Barry who creates the red diamond, but specifically his mandarin tangerines. Uh, I think they just have carrot tail that goes all the way down the bottom and they're really, really um, nice saturation. So they're on my radar as well as um, the uh, the urban gecko up in Canada. Um, you know, their photos always look really, really good at the urban gecko. But I don't know if their photos match the actual quality of the gecko in person. So that is something that I would like to experiment with, right? But at this time in the business, I don't know if we are profitable enough to just be experimenting with one or two thousand dollars, you know? I could even just buy one gecko from him. Honestly, there was a couple geckos now that I was looking at from him, but I'm asking him if if he can ship to um, I'm asking him if if he can ship to America year round because some Canadian some Canadian breeders, to my knowledge, like Billy from Mutation Creation, he has to wait to ship to America certain times of year, and and he has to work with like another broker and stuff like that. It's a whole big ordeal, right? And so I'm wondering if the urban gecko is that way. Now, I've heard some pretty bad stuff about the urban gecko's uh, customer service as well as his photos potentially being photoshopped to look better than they are. But that's why I want to buy from him to see if, um, to see if those rumors are true or not and, and actually give my testimony and you know, do a recording and a video for the quality of his animals because they look fantastic in his pictures. So while you're watching this, go to the urban gecko or the urban reptile. He has a whole bunch of reptiles he sells. But the urbanreptile.com, go to his leopard geckos and you'll see they are shining. Like they are top quality stuff. But I've heard some pretty bad, I'll call them rumors at this point, about... Um, health issues with his geckos, customer service issues. I've also seen good commentary, so don't get me wrong. And you got to take the good with the bad, right? Not everyone's going to like everybody, right? Like you guys like hanging out here, and I really enjoy having you here. But there's a lot of people that don't like me in the hobby. I don't know if you noticed, but because we work with the lemon frost gene, and because I made a video on how to set up a leopard gecko tub for three dollars. There's a lot of people that have like given me a lot of hate for stuff like that, right? And so you guys obviously don't see hate in it towards me. And so I just want to make sure that I buy from him and I give him an honest evaluation based on my experience, not based on someone else's experience. But that's gonna be a at minimum, it's gonna be about a thousand dollars to get you know, maybe one or two geckos from him, $1,000 to $1,500 to experiment. And so I don't know if I want to experiment with $1,500 right now. I mean, I kind of do. That's why I'm talking about it. Um, but what else did I see? There, There's probably some other good tangerine stuff out there. Oh, Gecko Daddy. He has this Tango Crush line of tangerines. I really want to experiment with his... Um, Tango Crush line as well. So, if I had to go my top three tangerines outside of our collection here that I would like to add in, I would say Barry Gardeners of Only Tangs, working his Mandarin, his Mandarin project. Um, I would say the Urban Gecko from Canada. And I want to specifically, he, I mean, he has a bunch of tangerines that are really nice quality. Electric, Mandarin, Blood, his personal Tornado, which he told me is the best quality. But when I look at the Tornado pictures on his website, and then I look at other tangerine pictures on his website, some of the other tangerine lines look better than the Tornado. So I don't really know, like, 
hey, do I go by the pictures or do I go by what this guy is telling me? You know, and, and that's that's kind of where the customer service thing and experience ties in, you know. And so if I wind up buying from him, I'll definitely do a full review and let you guys know. Um, so the Urban Gecko, Barry Gardner from Only Tangs, and then um, who is the other one that I just said right now? Um, it wasn't it wasn't Suburban Gecko. I don't remember. Who did I say right now? Well, there you go. Josh, is, Josh in the comments is saying that um, the Urban Gecko, he's had a, good, a great experience with Urban Gecko. So that's good. Like I said, I've seen great commentary. I've also seen some pretty bad commentary. Um, and I, I received some bad commentary from a popular breeder, you know, which doesn't mean much. Because a lot of popular breeders say bad stuff about me. so But I'm just saying popular breeders that I know tend to carry more weight with their words. Um, but everyone's experience is going to be different. And so I'll definitely let you know. I am definitely thinking about buying from the Urban Gecko. And then I could do like a full review on that and let you know like if, you know, how my experience went. Oh, thank you. Gecko Daddy. So as you know, Gecko Daddy is in the United States. He's put together the best tangerine lines for a long time. Um, so he has really great stuff as well. He told me recently that his best quality stuff is going to start to be for sale here over the next couple months. So you're, you're probably looking at somewhere between six to eight hundred bucks, maybe more for his best quality stuff. But um, I think those tangerines are worth it. Um, I'm really excited to breed our new tangerine to all these tangerine females that we have. And specifically, um, to see what, what it looks like when they are Tremper albino and what it looks like when they're not Tremper albino. Um, geckos tend to be more orange when they are not Tremper albino. They tend to be like a more fiery lava orange. Because once you get a Tremper albino, it kind of brightens the color a little bit. And especially in photographs and stuff, it's really hard to capture their brightness. But it takes it from like a fire, like a, it takes it from like a deep orange to a bright orange, right? Two different qualities. But uh, with all the geckos that we have here, we have the ability to produce both non tremper albino and tremper albino. So, yeah, great. I had to redo this live stream because last night it got deleted. So. Yeah, and that was that was my concern, Robbie. Is uh, I, I've seen a number of reports from people saying that the gecko is less vibrant. Also, reports of them saying that he uses Photoshop and even admitted that to them. Um, so who knows? Until I actually buy, I did send him an email today. I sent him an email saying, "Hey." Uh, when's the next time that I could get a shipment into the United States? Because if you don't know, they're from Canada, which is only one border away. But um, there are international guidelines for shipping. And uh, I don't know if he's able to ship right now. So look at this. Look at this beautiful Generation 4 Frosty Turk. So these are pretty cool. These are 93.75% Turkmenicus blood. And look at that eye. Look at those eyes. So the goal with this project is, if things go well with this, you could take these genetically outcrossed animals and you can uh, breed them to other wild types and you will get a reduction or you will get a complete dismissal of all the tumors and the issues that happen with that. As well as you could breed them back into the Macularis bloodline and get some cool combinations and stuff as long as you don't inbreed. Where I think it went really, really wrong with the Lemon Frost gene is when people were inbreeding too much. Um, matter of fact, the worst pictures that you see in this hobby of the Lemon Frost gene, they're all from inbred animals. You know, no one's, no one's showing good looking animals like this, right? Everyone's just, especially a lot of the biggest breeders, they've just given up on this concept of, of, of what is showing to work, right? 
like if there were no improvements without crossing then i i would get it to stop working with the lemon frost but if there are dramatic improvements without crossing why would you not at least try to give people a different alternative to breed the lemon frost because i would say nine out of ten gecko keepers they want to get their hands on a lemon frost and they want to breed the lemon frost regardless of the tumors so if you can come up with a better way to breed them a safer way to breed them and you have a big gecko facility and you have the ability to test that out why not do that so that's exactly what we're doing here it's a personal project i've taken on um i've even heard that there's clean ways to breed the enigma but no one is sharing that information people would rather just keep it silent keep you know keep it undercover so that they can stuff it under the rug and just work with the genes that they want to work with. But what about the genes that other people want to work with? Like just just because you don't want to work with Enigma or just because you don't want to work with Lemon Frost doesn't mean other people don't want to. And I'm still super surprised that I've, I've still never seen any outcrossing data on the Enigma Leopard Geckos. Like why? After 15 years, why is there no outcrossing data similar to what we're doing with um the the lemon frost gene where we're outcrossing it into wild bloodlines we're seeing success in that area why is there no data or documentation of that with the um enigma gene when it's been around 15 years and uh so to me i i don't know I just, I just, uh, I, I have some pretty strong opinions about that, but to me, I say there's no excuse. If you're a big leopard gecko breeder, I feel like it's almost your obligation to compile. Well, here's the thing. If, if you're a hobbyist, it's not your obligation to do anything, except you love the hobby and you want to see the hobby uh, increase. So I don't know why you wouldn't do it, but if you're, if you're making a living from leopard geckos and um, you made a killing off of Enigma and, and whatnot, I don't know why you wouldn't just record that. You're already recording the data. Why wouldn't you just record it along the way, put it in a spreadsheet, release it to the public? Why is it just word of mouth? Why is it just, oh, I say this is bad. You need to believe me and let's move on. Um, uh, word of mouth is, is not as efficient of a sole way of passing on information. It's one way of passing on information, but it's not the only way, nor is, is it the best way to pass on information. I mean, we've all played the game telephone where you whisper something into somebody else's ear and uh, it winds up being something completely different by the end of the line. And that's the same with word of mouth. Stories get changed. Information changes. So I think data and documentation are absolutely necessary um, to move the hobby forward. And again, obligation is a strong word. I don't, I don't mean that like every one of these big breeders are obligated to do that. I just don't see why it hasn't been done by somebody, anybody, somebody, please. Yeah, all of our, we have about 30 or 40 lemon frost babies from this year. The crosses, um, the outcrosses, all of them are healthy and good, but it's too early to, um, to know for sure. Because in generation three, when I started to see the little uh, brightening of the spots in generation three, that happened, I want to say, around the six to eight month mark. And all of these babies are at like the four to five month mark. Um, now, here's the thing with bright spots, right? Tumors are actual like bulges upon bulges upon bulges. It's cells just replicating and continuing to build it in place. And um, they won't die or whatever. So um, – what we're seeing on Gen 3, we have three Gen 3s right here. What we're seeing is what we call suspicious spotting. Areas that we're keeping an eye on. 
They're not bulges at all. Um, they are just brighter patches of skin, similar to a mole, right? I have, where is it? On this side. I forgot where it even is. Maybe it's here, but it's under my beard now. I have a mole on my skin, right? That is a darker patch of skin. A mole has the ability to be cancerous, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's cancerous. Same with these suspicious spottings. They have the ability to be the start or the beginnings of tumors, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they are the start of tumors. It could just be a cluster of bright iridophoroic cells. So again, we're, we're putting in all of this time and manpower and research to, to record all of this. And I will be giving update videos every single year or twice a year, whatever it winds up being. I just don't see why people didn't do that in the first place for Lemon Frost number one and also for, um, for Enigma. Like there's no excuse for Enigma. Enigma has been around for 15, 20 years. Like that thing should be recorded like in the history books, you know, but lemon frost is fairly new. A lot of people got straight away from it. So I can understand why there's nothing yet, but actually I can't understand why there's nothing yet. Enigma has been, uh, lemon frost has been around long enough for people to have documented it. This one's deep and shed, but man, this, this one, I can really see some really nice orange tones coming through. Let's see, I've been rambling. What question? So I've actually reached out to a couple. So all the data that I'm recording right now is observational. It's it's going to be data that we generate here, but data that we can show you. For example, this year we produced 40 lemon frost crosses, right? Out of those 40, how many develop suspicious spotting within the first year? And do any of the non-lemon frost babies that came from lemon frost bloodlines, do they develop suspicious spotting? That's one of the areas that we're going to observe. Another area that we're going to observe is future generations. Generation 5, Generation 6, Generation 7, and so on. Another thing that we're going to document is what happens when you take a Generation 3 and breed it back to the macularis bloodline, a completely separate bloodline, do the tumor issues worsen or, or do they stay the same or do they not uh, uh, become apparent? So all of these different tracks of data we're going to keep. In addition to that, we will take geckos that are not lemon frost, but they come from lemon frost parents, and we will breed them to genetically outcrossed and, and cleaner pure lemon frost Turkmenicuses that are very, very high percent clean blood. What happens when you combine the two? Does the inbreeding of that bloodline, the inbreeding of, and it's not really even inbreeding because they're, they're coming from separate macularis strain, um, Turkmenicus strains. So what we might actually do is take a Tur Turkmenicus strain. We might, uh, here's what we might do. Take a sibling that is not lemon frost. And then we'll take another sibling that is lemon frost. So they're brother and sister. We will breed them together and we will see if that produces more genetic defects. What that would tell me, if that does, what that would tell me is that there's other places in the gecko's DNA besides the lemon frost gene that are contributing to the lemon frost errors. Because if you get... Um, if you take this pure sibling and that doesn't have the lemon frost gene, it's basically just a pure Turkmenicus and you breed it to a, 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 a highly crossed out uh, lemon frost Turkmenicus and you breed them together, in theory, that bloodline should be clean as long as there's no other defects outside of the lemon frost gene. As they're saying, they're saying everything is tied to the lemon frost gene. But I don't think there's enough evidence to support that. And looking at the scientific data that, that did come from UCLA, they showed genetic errors in, 12, I, I forget what it was, it was either 12 
or 20 other places in the gecko's DNA besides the lemon frost area. So everyone's saying the lemon frost area is responsible 100% for the tumor issues. But I'm just not completely convinced about that. And um, neither is my my doctor uh, business partner as well as medical advisor. Um, he, has, he has a pair of medical eyes and he's looking at this and he's not convinced either. You know, um, so anyway, um, that is everything that we are facing right now with the Lemon Frost Project, but more to come. I'm actually going to do one of my next videos is probably going to be, um, one of my next videos is probably going to be a Lemon Frost video. I have lots of plans to do videos. I'm just trying to get caught up in cleaning and stuff because now that we're selling geckos, that also takes up a lot of time and whatnot. So let's see. What's up, Apex? Oh yeah, they'll they'll crucify you. If you if you mention Lemon Frost or even Enigma in Facebook groups, they'll crucify you. Um, and that's another reason why knowledge has not spread, right? Because they crucify anybody who talks about it. They tried to crucify me. They're still trying to crucify me. Um, things have been quiet for a while because I haven't released any new content on the Lemon Frost. But as soon as I release new content, guess what? You're going to see everybody trying to crucify Geeky Gecko Creations all over again. Every single time. So I don't know why they're against knowledge. Why would you not want this information recorded? I'm willing to put in the expenses, the time the energy to record this for the hobby i don't know why these other medium to large size breeders they're just like crucify him we don't agree with this because we heard that there is no cure well is that proven let me let me see the data that proves that there's no cure and and then we'll be good oh you don't have data wait so how do you know that it's proven oh i was told oh okay you were told? Well, I don't know what to tell you then because Anyway, I'm starting to get like I'm sounding angry. I'm just um I don't know, I get em I get em um I put a lot of emphasis into my speech sometimes. I promise you I'm not mad. I always tell everybody I I understand. Um, when, a matter of fact, when Lemon Frost first came out, I told myself, I was like, I'm not interested in working with that. It wasn't until I saw the genetically outcrossed Lemon Frost and how much of an improvement there was. If there was a little bit of improvement, if there was barely a noticeable improvement, I wouldn't have gone down that road. But there is a noticeable, significant improvement in geckos that are outcrossed genetically far away from that original line plus why do some lemon frosts not develop tumors there's something else going on here there's something else going on here and i'm interested in working it out i don't know if you guys knew that but not every lemon frost develops tumors in the ucla paper wow this gecko is bright Good Lord. Good Lord. Oh, you can't see the brightness because this room shows the gecko. It makes the gecko look yellow because of the light that is above the gecko. But this gecko is bright. Um, what was I saying before I interrupted myself? Actually, I didn't interrupt myself. I was just distracted by the beauty of the gecko. Man, there's, oh, you can see his color looking a little better here, but he's definitely way brighter than that. Um, I've tried to talk to a lot of the people that spoke negative uh, to me about the lemon frost. Um, and one of them I made pretty good headway with. Um, 
and we do conversate and we have a conversation about it. That's all I want to do. I just want to have a conversation about it. But a lot of them, they don't even want to talk about it. Their mind is already made up, you know? Um, if your mind is already made up, then how are you open to learning new things and, and uh, new knowledge coming into any topic of life? And so that's what I would like to say to them is, okay, you gather your points of information. Let, let's have a respectable debate or conversation, whatever you want to call it, because obviously you're on one side of the, the, the topic and I'm on the other side of the topic. Let's conversate about it. Let's come together over it. Let's not push each other apart and start slandering and, and naysaying each other because slander is a crime, by the way. You slander somebody, you could that you that's a felony. You could be up for a lawsuit, right? And I'm being slandered by all of these people, and they don't even realize it. They they think they're in the right. But what makes them so argumentative and defensive is probably the fear that they might be wrong after all of this time. And so my challenge to any any of those people listening would be let's talk about it. Let let's let's just get let's just get our points out there and talk about it and not in secret but in front of the masses, right? When you hold a presidential election, it's not in secret. Each party gets to say their side of the argument and then they get, you know, their side of the, the public, whatever, and then they get voted on. So this whole, uh, I, I don't even know what to call it, this whole um, dictatorship mentality that a lot of these breeders tend to have, that I strongly disagree with. And, and they, can, they can operate their business in any way they want. But um, at the end of the day, I, I just, I don't know. Uh, I don't like dictatorship too much, I guess. Unless it comes to, to God. God can dictate anything because he's perfect. But if you're going to try to dictate to me, you better be better than me or more perfect than me. And that's kind of the attitude that these leopard gecko breeders take. There's these leopard gecko breeders that take this, whoa, there's these leopard gecko breeders that take this attitude like, oh, because I've been doing this so, so long, I'm impervious to whatever you have to say. Whatever you have to say, I know more than you. Whatever you have to say, I'm right and you're not right. They have this whole attitude like that. And it's just like, uh, you didn't even listen to what I just said. Like, for, forget whether I'm right or not. But you're, you're not even willing to listen. You're not even willing to talk about it. Put your name out there. Put yourself out there. You know, it's the fear. I think they have a fear of repercussion. So. Oh, the $1,000 geckos and shed. So here's the thousand dollar gecko deep in shed. You could just see he's, he's uh, all gray. Um, this gecko that I'm holding right here, this is a beautiful holdback, guys. This one is amazing. Um, this, because this is a uh, Tremper albino, it's kind of a bright orange. And this gecko is more of a, a deeper reddish orange. So I think a combination of these two is actually going to be really, really good. Uh, who knows that uh, that TikTok? I'm at the Pizza Hut. I'm at the Taco Bell. I'm at the combination Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. That's what we do up in here. Combos. Love. We love our combos. Magma. Yeah, that was magma that you saw. Uh, unfortunately, magma is in deep in shed right now. So deep, he might even shed by the time we get to, to him cleaning his rack here. I really love these geckos that uh, I'm cleaning right now, which is another reason I wanted to do the stream, because they are awesome. Here's another tangerine raptor we have. She was born with a little bit of a stubby tail, 
but that's no issue. We're going to breed her anyway. She'll be perfectly fine. Um, she does have snake eyes, like 50-50 eyes. You can see she has 50-50 red eyes. She is tangerine. Um, tangerine eclipses are typically a little, not a little bit, they're typically a lot more washed out in color than regular eclipses, but they have every capability of producing, um, they have every capability of producing bright babies, and I will show you why. Uh, as soon as I'm done cleaning this guy's tub, I will show you the difference between an eclipse tangerine and a regular tangerine. So let me go get it real quick. So as you guys know, uh, Jelly Bean is one of our beautiful um, Eclipse Tangerine Leopard Geckos. These babies come from her, both of these. This one is Eclipse. And you can see that it kind of has more of a yellowish orange. This one is Het Eclipse. It's not Visual Eclipse, it's Het Eclipse. And again, the lighting in this room is yellow, but I'm telling you, if I put these two geckos next to each other, look at that. Look at the orange saturation on this gecko compared to this one at a distance you could really see. This is a visual eclipse. This is a het eclipse. Really cool stuff. Um, and this quality of a gecko, this orange one right here, it came from a gecko like Jelly Bean that looks just like this. And you might say, how could a yellowish orange gecko produce a deep orange gecko? The reason is because of the eclipse gene. If the, if the eclipse gene does not pass on to the babies, they'll all be solid, solid orange. If the eclipse gene does pass on to the babies, then they will be a lighter version of orange, but they contain all the genetic possibility to make super orange babies. I'm at the Pizza Hut. I'm at the Taco Bell. I'm at the combination Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. Oh, this one's really cool too. I think we had this one for sale, but now it's going on long enough to where we might be able just to keep this little one. Um, so hard to see the saturation quality in this one but this one has very nice purple hues you can see the purple hues right there and all of that yellowish orange in person is really a vibrant orange this is a vibrant orange gecko um it's gonna make a great breeder i think we had it for sale i'm not, I'm not sure but i might have to take that one off the list and uh breed it to magma So, um, talking about working different tangerine lines, the way that Gecko Daddy did it, and probably the way that a lot of other big breeders did it, is they took all of these different tangerines and they started combining them and then selecting out the tangerines that were the most, most orange. Okay? I got to pee and then I'll be, I'll be right back to explain this in detail.
Okay, let's think about this for a second. Tangerines is line breeding. So let's say you have one tangerine male here, any line of tangerine. Let's say it's a blood tangerine. And because it's line breeding, it has multiple locations in its DNA that are responsible for making that gecko orange. It's the same thing with your height. Your dad has multiple locations in his DNA that got passed on to you. Your mom has multiple locations in her DNA that got passed on to you and you have multiple locations in your DNA code that code for height. It's the same with tangerine. There's multiple locations in each gecko's DNA that code for orange. So let's say this blood tangerine over here has five locations coding for orange. And then this um, inferno tangerine over here has a different set of five um, locations coding for orange. Now, when you combine these two geckos, you have the potential to hit 10 locations coding for orange in that gecko's DNA. You also have the potential for the dad to pass on three and the mom to pass on two. You have the potential to pass on one and the, the other gecko to pass on five. You have any combination potential that could take place. So it's a numbers game. How many can you breed and hold back the best of the best because they're obviously dominating in, in the, the amount of locations that are coding for orange. Keep breeding those puppies to the other ones that are, are the most orange. And that's essentially how to get the best of the best uh, lineages going for any project, a Black Knight project, a Tangerine project, a Bold Stripe project, anything. All right, buddy, or lady, I should say lady. We'll see you next time. See you in a week. To the gecko, because I see them once a week. It's like a weekly, a weekly cleaning date that I have with all these guys. A weekly cleaning, feeding, humid hide. This one's in shed. Pretty, pretty cool. It's in shed, but this is one of our bold pinstripe, bold stripe projects. Um, it did not inherit the full pinstripes, so we might have listed her for sale. But again, uh, bold stripe is another very, very strong project. If you take one dad that is a strong bold stripe and you breed him to a gecko that's not even a bold stripe, you can actually produce bold stripes, like full bold stripe babies because of how strong the dad's genetics are. That is line breeding. The dad is passing on 15 locations of bold stripe and the mom passes on zero. But because the dad has so many locations of bold stripe, it winds up actually passing on to the babies. Uh, um, in certain levels, you know. Eagle Earth, the number one thing for shedding leopard geckos. And water. Make sure you give them some water. I need my chat window <clears throat> to talk to me. Because I'm looking at it over here. Let's see. Oh, thank you, Eamon. I appreciate that. I love just, I love talking geckos, as you can see. And I, and although I'm not perfect, I, I thank you for saying that I don't misspeak, but I, I am not perfect. Sometimes I make, you know, little mistakes here and there and whatnot. Um, but, 
And that was another thing too. Some some people would pick on me and be like, "Oh, you made a mistake here," or "Oh, you made a mistake there." And I'm like, "So that that discredits me because I said something wrong or because I I made a mistake like unknowingly even or like, you know, my brain is going very many different directions sometimes cleaning the geckos, talking, reading the questions. So I might might misspeak, right? I try my best not to, but it does it does happen. Um but I was like so that discredits me? Like, I don't know. I just... Show this guy again. Hypo and Tangerine makes a great combination. So here's a Lemon Frost that is... That did not inherit the lemon frost gene so this came from a lemon frost parent but it did not inherit the lemon frost gene so a a good um data tracking entry would be let's breed this guy let's breed him or or her back to her dad actually and if more genetic errors come up then that means that there's a lot of locations in the gecko's DNA that is causing errors. Not just one location, right? Because uh, that that's why we typically don't inbreed in human beings is because human beings are a lot, are a lot more susceptible to defects and inbreeding than reptiles are. Reptiles have actually been studied in the wild inbreeding within the same family for decades they all live in this one little cave and they all inbreed with each other. No problem, right? Survival of the fittest. The weakest ones will be ex, you know, the weakest ones will inherit the defects, they'll die off and the strongest ones will survive. But reptiles do not really have any issue with inbreeding. Dad to daughter, mom to son. Like that's not an issue, right? If I start to see issues between a dad and a daughter combo, you know what that's telling me? That there are heavily pronounced genetic defects going on in that gecko's DNA. And that would tell me that those defects are influencing the lemon frost gene to be worse. Because again, I don't think the lemon frost gene is solely responsible for all of these issues. Because when we outcross, we see better results. And not every lemon frost gecko has tumors. So that's kind of telling me that I think there's other areas in the gecko's DNA that are contributing to whether the gecko has worse tumors or less worse tumors. That being said, when you inbreed, all of those defects have the potential to combine in the babies. And so that's what I mean by this will be a good test, you know? Thank you, Jay Lee. The live stream last night got deleted so I, because of the music. So I have to do another one. Yeah, if you have a thick hide, the heat might not radiate so well. Another thing you could do is take away the layers of substrate more and more until just the hide is touching the bottom of the mat where the heat is, observe the temperature, make sure it's not going above 95 and you're good for leopard geckos. Oh, Germany, what's up, Rhino? That is great, I'm glad. I love, I love seeing people from other countries and that's why I was like, you know what, I'm cleaning right now. I love geckos. The, the people that follow us love geckos. Um, the people from other countries have been asking me to do a earlier live stream so that they could chime in. And so let's do it. And that's why I made this live stream today. Plus the fact that last night's got deleted and and uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't have YouTube deleting my content and then me not making more. That wouldn't make sense. So I had to make some more content, you know?
Oh, this is one of my favorites, guys. Her name is Cream. And she is super rich and creamy. She's awesome. Oh, wait, no. Peaches is. But Cream is really cool, too. So check this out. These are going to be siblings. And it's really hard to capture how bright this gecko is. But this gecko shines bright like a diamond. She is fantastic. And we have a lot of geckos from this same lineage that are for sale right now on our website. So anyone who's interested, go to geekygeckocreations.com. And we have some really cool holographic stickers that we're sending out with each order now. Some holographic business cards. Really cool stuff. I'll see you, Squam. See you on the next one. What if I did a live stream every day? I wonder if that would be good for my channel or if it would hurt my channel. I think it would be good. I think live streams are good. We always get great participation. People stay for a long time. All of that helps the channel. So if you want to continue helping our channel, make sure you like the video, subscribe to our channel. Oh, look at her. She's like trying to push into my little hand. Leopard geckos are so awesome. But look how bright this animal is. It's it's hard to appreciate because again, she's in yellow, yellow lighting. But yeah, um, when you share our content and watch our content and re-watch our content, that helps us blow up. And so I appreciate that because you guys, in one year, you've helped us grow from zero followers to, let me see where we're at right now. 2300 followers guys bravo i i applaud you guys for for that contribution because 2300 followers in one year is really really good and we are growing at an average rate of about 210 subscribers per month that's just amazing and i haven't even released any videos over the last month because i've been so busy with cleaning and now sales so please guys help me out re-watch the old videos share our content Make sure you like and subscribe, and we will continue to, to ride this train all the way to the end. What do you think a goal for us is? Do you think we should set our goal for 10,000 subscribers a year from now? So let's see. Today's date is August 17th. Remember this day. And a year from now, when you're tuning into our live streams, in August, summer, August, that's how I'm going to help us all remember. Summer, August. Let's see if we hit our 10,000 subscriber goal. Okay? We're going to be pushing for it. Let's see if we hit it. Here is the really, really creamy girl. I love this girl. I love this girl. Yes. She has just such a cool color to her. Check this out. Check this. She's just she's just all cream. Like she like look at that tail. She's just like a um like one of those smoothie shakes, like one of those smoothie milkshakes or something like that. She's awesome. She's also a clip, so she she's going to be a great breeder as well. Um she tossed her water bowl into her food bowl. You know what that's telling me? It's telling me she wants more water and more food. We're going to give her just that. If no poo is stuck on the tub, you can easily just change out the newspaper. It's going to be perfect. Oh, she's making a getaway. Sorry, baby. <laughs> Did you see that? I had to push her down. <laughs> Trust me, I handle these geckos gently. No animals were harmed in the making of this live stream. Yeah, she's really cool. Like, just her tone. She's like this creamy yellow with um, sir, uh, uh, big spots of orange and a pure white tail. She's awesome. She's one of my favorites. I just think it's really cool looking. And I think she has snake eyes. Let's see. Let's see if we can see. Oh, there it is. Snake eye. You see that? 
She's albino, obviously. There it is. There it is. You can. There it is. You can see her snake eye. There. Pure red eyes for that tremper albino. All right, baby. Say goodbye. Mwah. See you in a week. That's what I say to all my geckos. See you next week. Here's one of the Circle Project geckos. Now you can see why this gecko fell into the Circle Project. Look at that circle right in the middle of its back. Look at that. It's a perfect circle. And it's orange too. That's really rare. You don't normally see orange circles like that. So this gecko will probably definitely have to be held back in the Circle Project. Again, that circle right there. Beautiful. So um, I can actually ship to Europe. I've been talking with the exportation company, but here's how it works. Dutch Dragon Imports is located in, oh gosh, where are they? I thought it's somewhere in the Netherlands and they can ship to almost anywhere in like the UK, Europe area. They can ship to Hong Kong. So uh, get with me after the live stream. Um, Message me on Facebook or Instagram and um, give me all your shipping information and I can let you know. But they basically have two, two things you can do. A couple times a year, they will take geckos from America. They'll bring it to their facility and you could pick it up at their facility. The other option is they could ship it from their facility to you if you're within the European area that they, that they service or the Hong Kong area. But... That's going to cost like an extra $50. Here's the real kicker. To get it overseas, the shipping costs $250 just to get one animal overseas. That's just shipping. That's not even the price of the animal. So that's one of the biggest issues with uh, overseas shipping. But I would love to do it and, and work with people and, and get my international shipping experience down. There is a company we could use. Again, they're called Dutch Dragon Imports. And they're located, I believe, in Germany. And, oh, Amsterdam. I'm sorry. They're in Amsterdam. So if you're anywhere close to Amsterdam, we could ship it to them. And then you could pick it up from their Amsterdam facility. But they only receive animals a couple times of year. It's not like I could ship it today and it will be there in a, you know, in a couple of days. They only ship animals a couple times a year um, in and out of America. So I would have to find out. I would have to find out. Um, I, oh, I think I did ask them. They said their next shipping is like around um, September, I want to say. So if you're internet, if you're close to Amsterdam and you really are interested in some geckos, um, let let me know through Facebook or Instagram or send me an email, geekygeckocreations at gmail.com, and we will figure out pricing and everything like that. But I need to warn you, one gecko is two hundred and fifty dollars shipping to Amsterdam. And you can only receive it a couple times during the year. I believe the next time that they're receiving is uh, September, which is next month. So let me know if that interests you. Man, this gecko is really nice green too. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's the price of one gecko already. Yeah, Matthew, they deleted our live stream last night. Catherine, I'm really glad you're enjoying the channel. Please subscribe and, and, and keep being a part of our community here. As you see, most live streams do not gather a lot of people during the day. But I'm proud of you guys because we have a constantly in here between 15 to 20 people. That's a lot of people for the middle of the day. Um, and I realize some people are on the East Coast and it's later, but I'm on the West Coast. And someone just donated $10. So thank you very much. Thank you so, so much. That is awesome. All of that goes towards these guys and our goal and our passion here of continuing to grow this 
channel as well as this facility. And I would like to have a visitable facility one day. So you could be like, okay, we want to come visit your facility and see all the whole operation in person. And you'll be able to do that. This one's kind of just normal. Pretty sure this one's for sale. But even our normals are still very nice coloring because we have um, selected the best of the best jeans over the years and the best of the best vibrancy and colors and combos so that even a gecko that does not inherit a lot of genetic potential is still a super nice gecko. But I'm very glad you're liking our channel. We have lots of videos. Let me know if you have a question on any topic. I have um, a lot of videos on almost any topic for leopard geckos, some stuff for ball pythons, tag use, um, a lot of stuff. Yep, and all the geckos are drinking now. If you didn't know this, basically the only time that your gecko drinks water is when you change the water bowl. Let me know if you've had a different experience, but I've only ever seen my leopard geckos drinking when the water is fresh on day one, the minute they get it in their tub. Um, they'll go right up to the bowl and they'll start licking and drinking. So somebody donated, let me see. Gonzo's Geckos, Josh Gonzalez, thank you so much. About to finally build my rack from your instruction video. Thank you so much, Gonzo. We do have a, a, an instructional video on how to build a rack. Um, where it walks you by step by step and a couple people have taken that initiative to give it a shot and the first person um, Showed me their pictures and everything and they've been successful. So Gonzo, please share with me um, What happens with your build? I would love to see your success story and um, Yeah, a lot of people alter it and taper it to be like whatever size they needed to But I show you how to build one of these racks right here six feet tall two feet wide. It's on our it's on our gecko channel Muhammad. So Eclipse makes geckos lighter. Um, now this is not the best gene to work with. And it's not the most popular. Not a lot of people have this anymore. It's called NDBE. And that stands for Nor Desire Black Eyes. That is one of the traits that actually, it's it's recessive, so it takes a copy from each parent to pass on the trait, but it makes the geckos darker. The only other way to get darker geckos is to breed geckos that are darker to each other. Perfect example. Man, this boy is looking beautiful right now. This is a Black Knight Leopard Gecko. So if I want to make any Leopard Geckos darker in my uh, collection, I will breed a Black Knight Leopard Gecko to any geckos to develop a line of Leopard Geckos that will be darker and darker and darker. Black Knights are fairly new to the USA. They've only really been popular the last couple of years. Um, select breeders are working with them such as ourselves but they're getting more into the hands of US breeders and US common keepers and I think it's such an exciting project to take black geckos like this and combine it with uh, lighter contrasting geckos like white and yellow tangerine um, hyper xanthic so many cool combinations await the black knight project so if you want to mix dark colors into your geckos Look for Black Knight Leopard Geckos. They're not the cheapest. You're going to be paying anywhere between $500 to $5,000. But they are on the rise right now in the American hobby of popularity. Yeah, magma. I wish I could show I wish I could show magma's redness because he is like 
super nice orangey red, but he's completely in shed, so he's really gray right now. Um, but that just means I need to do another live stream, right? Oh, Matthew, that's great. You got your heat tape. So Matthew ordered some heat tape from us. Um, we gave him a complimentary shirt that we sent him. It was it was pretty cool because the box, Matthew, the box that I sent you the heat tape in, it was fifteen dollars regardless of what size the box was. So fifteen dollars was the cheapest, and there was so much space in that box. So I was like, should I put a towel in here or just newspaper? Like newspaper's not that strong. And then I thought to myself, you know what? I got some shirts. Matthew's super fan of our channel and everything. Let me just go ahead and send him a shirt. I'm pretty sure he would want one. So glad you got it. Let me know how the heat tape works. We are a distributor now. Of, there's the shirts, by the way. We do sell these now. And we actually have a Gecko Logo 2.0 that we're going to put into production and start getting shirts as well uh, for Gecko Logo 2.0. But it says Geeky Gecko Creations. It has all our social media on the back. So if you have interest in a shirt, let me know. Um, but we do, um, what's the name? We do promote and sell FlexWatt heat tape. The only American-made heat tape and the number one safest heat tape to use in the world. Perfect for all of your geckos or arachnids or any species that needs just a little bit of heat underneath their rack. We distribute their product now. And actually, I think we sell it at the cheapest prices. I've listed it at um, $2.25 per foot. Most other places are, I think, at minimum $2.35 per foot or so. So if you're interested in heat tape, let me know. And what we could do, like we did for Matthew, I could wire it up for you so that all you need to do is receive it, plug it in, and you're good to go. And you could, you could snake it through your rack. You could snake it through any um, storage unit that you buy from like Walmart or anything like that. And um, it makes it so that you could keep like 15 or 20 geckos on one rack. It's super, super cool. So organization, Jay Lee, organization is tougher other times than not. I was really stressing out about a month ago um, because I was really becoming overwhelmed with breeding the geckos, um, cleaning the geckos, talking with uh, people and answering questions. And then breeding season started to slow down. Once breeding season started to slow down, <clears throat> um, I still got a lot of cleaning and, and everything to do and sales conversations now because we just started selling. But it's like a sigh of relief. I'm not like stressed out anymore like I was a month ago. So organization is key for me i keep um a spreadsheet in my computer of almost anything so you guys couldn't see magma fell to the floor which is okay because it's just carpet but um i keep a spreadsheet over every point of data for breeding and we have a we have a video on that if you want to see our video on breeding and i give you a link to the spreadsheet that we use but i keep spreadsheets for everything I put notes in my phone. The most important stuff, I will either text myself a message saying, hey, um, you need to do this in the morning. Or I will write it on my um, dry erase board. Or I will write it on a notebook. And I have a notebook like that I check every day for sales and, and stuff that is like of utmost importance that I absolutely need to do, like cannot wait, needs to be done that day. So I would say... Organization is done by book um, keeping spreadsheets on uh, uh, keeping spreadsheets in the computer, writing down information in a notebook, messaging yourself and storing information in places in your phone where you know you're going to see it, and also our whiteboards are posted to my door. So when I walk in and out of the gecko room every day, I look at these whiteboards, and so that's kind of the way that that we do our organization. Hey, buddy. Hi, Magma. Say hi to everyone. Oh, plus the guy that I got Magma from, he has another gecko for sale uh, that I'm considering getting as well.
But let's see, if I had to buy, man, I told you guys, I, I really want to experiment with the underground reptile because he has some really cool geckos out there right now, which are actually not that high priced for, for his price range because his price range goes, for tangerines, they normally go from like 500 to like 1,000. Um, and these ones that I saw um, on his website, whatnot, they're listed at like around five to 600. So they're not that much dollar wise, but they look really great. And one of them even has like really deep carroting, like a 90% carrot tail. And I'm thinking of getting her for, for magma. But I might have to talk to the wife and see if she'll allow me to do that. Plus I've been looking into Lichianus geckos and that's been distracting me a little bit. Um, Lichianus geckos are pretty expensive right now, but I think that they are on the rise of popularity and um, I, I want to get in now, like the the investor in me wants to get in now before they're super expensive. But in reality, I, I learned this lesson the hard way one time before. It would be better for me to invest in animals that make the company money, even if I miss out on animals that are cheaper now and they're going to be more expensive in the future because I will have the money to pay for those more uh, expensive animals in the future as they grow in price. And I will have a growing infrastructure of a customer base and um, um, all that kind of stuff. Instead of buying a, uh, like, let's say I buy a lychee now, right? A lychee is like $1,000 now. If I spend $1,000 now on that lychee, I don't have any gecko to breed it to. That gecko is not going to make me any money. Plus, lychees are not super popular right now. Only until they become super popular can you really count on their reliability of income. Um, so it would be better. It would be, oh, this is cool. It would be better for me to invest in a $600 tangerine leopard gecko that will make me a whole bunch of babies that will each be worth five to six hundred dollars or more. Hopefully, you know you got to sell them. It's not easy to sell, but you got you know you got to do it. Um, and then, like, let's just say it makes me six babies at four hundred dollars each. That's twenty four hundred dollars instead of buying this one gecko for a thousand dollars and being negative one thousand dollars and not even being able to breed this gecko and the gecko's not even become popular yet. And then by the time I need to buy a male for this gecko, it did become popular and they're super expensive now and they're like $2,000. Now I'm $3,000 in the hole with no profit. So I learned this lesson the hard way last time. I should invest in animals that I can sell and that are gonna make the business more profitable so that with the profits from the business, I can buy almost any animal I want in the future to enhance the collection and to um, to expand our breeding operation. Does that make sense? Hope that makes sense. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do a whole bunch of um, uh, videos, a video series as well on the business side of a reptile hobby slash company. For those of you who are interested in a little bit of business knowledge and, and how to connect the two, because I've learned some stuff, I've gained, I've learned some lessons and uh, good stuff to share. I must be behind, so I apologize. 2 a.m., well. I guess I'm not catering to the <laughs> um, European audience time-wise too well. Now here is... Here's that free... Here's the free gecko that came with the $1,000 gecko that I bought who actually wound up being ovulating, laying a pair of infertile eggs, and then I bred her to the thousand dollar male let me see if she's still yeah she's still ovulating we're gonna keep breeding her it's crazy he thought that she was done for the season and i guess she she had other plans honestly that's the benefit of shipping 
sometimes sometimes you ship animals and it winds up triggering them to breed. For example, we shipped a couple animals out that were not breeding for us in our facility. Um, but the minute they went to somebody else's facility, they started breeding in that other person's facility. That happens. It, it does happen. See, I need someone here. Which one of you guys is going to come here and read off uh, the questions for us so that my ramblingness can be contained? I'm, I'm missing a lot of questions. But I'm going to be looking at those questions little by little right now. Algebra, great. Oh, Corina, good to good to meet you. Thanks for being in contact. Thank you for that compliment, Corina. I really appreciate that. Chameleonis is in here. Yeah, ND. So NDBE is usually tied to the Mandarin Tangerine. That is correct. Yeah, Brenda, <laughs> I threw a loop. So we did a live stream last night. It got deleted because we were playing music and taking requests. And so I was like, I can't have YouTube one up in me. I need to make more content. So I'm look I'm going through and cleaning some cool geckos right now and figured I would do that. Oh thanks, Brenda. I appreciate that. That's that feels good to know that we can help uh brighten brighten your day. Oh, geckos are light. Yeah, geckos are life. Please send me a message on Messenger or Facebook, um, and I can send you. I can send you a, a sticker. Now, Matthew, when, when, when you say darkest orange leopard gecko, do you mean like the most orange? Or do you mean like, um, do you mean like the brightest, like the best color orange? Or do you actually mean like the darkest, darkest orange? Because this leopard gecko was actually our darkest orange gecko. She has a lot of these deep, green bandings um so yeah she's it's hard to tell but she has these green bands that uh make her darker and, and you can really see here's here's this other gecko here and you could just see them next to each other she does have more darkness to her she might be a good um she might be a good Black Knight Project Gecko. Any geckos that have darkness to them, you definitely want to put the Black Knight into that. Yeah, Christy, if you want a gecko, we have a lot of really beautiful colors, vibrant color geckos on our website. Check us out, geekygeckocreations.com. You also get these new holographic shiny stickers with each purchase. So that's pretty cool. Cool, I caught up. Oh no, did I catch up? I think I caught... Caught up. I missed a couple questions, but I think it was just people talking to each other. So just for time's sake, I had to bypass that. But let me know if I missed your important question. Repost it, and um, we'll, I'll get that on there. I'm such a perfectionist. I want to see if I can line this up right. Let's see. Let's see if I go the right way here. No. There's a lag on the stream, so we're going to go this way. It's like a seven second lag so I can 
see how I align things. Okay, there we go. <laughs> it's exactly the same as it was before. Now magma should be able to shed perfectly, perfectly fine and all of that kind of stuff. Now if the water bowl only has a little bit of mealworm skin in it, that's no problem. This can be reused. Here is another lemon frost baby lineage that did not inherit the lemon frost gene. But it's still really nice, really nice color. Yeah, for sure. Um, again, the urban reptile, the urban gecko, he has some really cool Black Knight tangerine crosses. And it does look pretty cool. It's probably not number one on my list to make right now. I want to continue enhancing the tangerine lines as much as possible and then eventually cross it into everything white and yellow black knight fasciolatus that's kind of like my strategy is produce the best of the best black knights produce the best of the best tangerines produce the best of the best um high yellows and then once the project is at like top quality Combine all those projects together and now you'll have the brightest yellows combining with the darkest blacks combining with the um, The most pure oranges. That's the goal So with the Max Snow, I would breed another Max Snow to it because Max Snow plus Max Snow equals something called a Super Snow, which is an all white and black animal, no yellow, no orange at all. So um, I really think that that's like a great combo, especially for beginners, is the Super Snow to shoot for. It's very like quick and, and easy to like um, to, to replicate. And see results for it. And it looks tremendous. Um, also, this this is not in everybody's budget price range, but um pure pure black knights make a great combo with snows right now because snows take away a lot of the yellow pigment and so you're just left with like a white and um, black gecko um, but again that's that's super high dollar project if you get the best of the best quality black knight males you're talking about like three thousand uh, dollars right now um, anywhere between one to three thousand dollars so oh yeah I would do a snow snow to snow Oh, that's cool. Yeah, there there were some other names. I, I never heard Black Velvet, but there were some other. There were we have a jailbreak. There were some other names that I I've seen for Black Knights, which are like um, Black Pearls and whatnot, Charcoals, Carbons, um, other melanistic lines of gecko that I'm sure has Black Knight like mixed in there and whatnot. You know, but. Um, but yeah, that's really interesting. I never heard I never heard the velvet name. That's pretty cool.
And actually, we did cross our we crossed our Black Knight into um, a pretty nice Tangerine Gecko this year. So we already started our own Tangerine Black Knight lines. We started our own Black Knight Snow lines. And then, of course, we have the Pure Black Knight lines. Um, but as time goes on, I'm sure we'll develop some pretty unique Black Knight projects. And I'm curious to know what good names should we coin for our specific Black Knight projects. Black Velvet is taken. Black Pearl is taken. Black Knight is taken. Um, so think of some other cool names for Black Knight lines and leave a comment or drop it in the chat. Oh, here I think is a really nice pinstripe, bold stripe. Oh yeah, it has a little bit of additional patterning to it, but our goal for the pinstripe project is to create two like Sharpie-like black lines on each side and obviously have an empty back, just a pure empty back. And uh, this is sort of a beautiful example of that how it's just really clean and really pure, just like stripes. Hun, is that you? Whitney's home. She's greeting the cat. Whitney's my wife, for those who don't know. Hun, I love you. She teaches, so she's always tired and stressed out when she gets home. Not stressed out, but she just needs to rest. So I just wanted to tell her I love her. Give her some time to de, de, uh, de, de stress. Oh, the cat is happy that she's home. I could hear the cat meowing. All right, well, we're going to say goodbye to this one. Really cool, just extra dark and bold patterning. Um, we have a lot of geckos like this on our website for really decent pricing. They're really like high yellow, dark black patterns, as well as some orange um shapes and um patterns thrown in there it's really cool like i said i i've selectively chosen uh the best of the best stuff so that no matter what we produce it's always good to sell and it's always a great buy for anybody And let me remind you, this is tagu season. We still have a bunch of beautiful tagus for sale. You can also check out the website to see any of our available animals. I think the website mentioned to me last time I looked that we have like 65 available animals. So this might be one of them. I'm not sure. It's a white and yellow. I really don't like getting rid of white and yellows because they make their color enhancers. Um, for anything that you breed them to even though this one is not the brightest one that I have um, it could be going into shed number one and number two um, white and yellow is just it's just a crazy enhancer gene that even if the parent is not as as bright it can still make babies with the right pairing that is super super bright Uh, 
Obsidian Mandarin. That sounds pretty cool. Black Tar, Blackboard, Midnight, Ebony, Obsidian. I really like Obsidian. I really like Obsidian. That's cool. I think I might take that. Who made that recommendation? Average U.S. price for leopard geckos are, yeah, 100 to $200, depending on um, what morphs they are. But they get pretty expensive, even in America. Uh, they could get into the three, four, five hundred $500 range as quality goes up. Brenda, good name. Good name. Obsidian. That is cool. See, that's why collaborating and... and Talking with other people is the way to go. That's why, like I said earlier in this video, all those people that don't want to talk to me, they don't want to talk about the lemon frost gene, they don't want to put knowledge out there or have an open conversation, I just don't understand how that helps the hobby grow. It doesn't. Uh, in reality, collaboration helps the hobby grow. Um, mutual respect, open conversation... Like, that's what makes the hobby grow. So, but really, really good recommendation, Brenda. I will remember that. Um, Obsidian. I'm going to write it on our board and write your name so I don't forget it was you that recommended it. All right, cool stuff. So this gecko is going to go back. Obsidian. Doesn't that just sound cool? It has a cool ring to it. Here at Geeky Gecko Creations, now featuring the Obsidian line. A genetically... A genetically selective line for the darkest of the darkest black knights that we hatch that's cool that's cool name i don't even know where i've heard that word before like it's so vague to me i'm almost thinking like i don't know where i've heard it but it's really cool Obsidian is in Minecraft, huh? So the Jay Lee, the spreadsheet for our breeding. Um, let me know if you don't find it, but look through our videos and it says how we track our female leopard geckos. You could even do a YouTube search for that. How we track our female leopard geckos. Our video will probably pop up. In the video description is a link to a Google Doc spreadsheet of how you can track your exact same female um, uh, uh, um, operation. Watch the video because I show you in that video how to use the spreadsheet. Um, now the link is uneditable, meaning that you can't click on the link and then start editing. You have to copy and paste what's in the link into your own Google Docs spreadsheet and then you can edit that because otherwise everybody would be editing the link and then, you know, you just can't have that because then everybody's information will be uh, viewable to everybody else. So if you have trouble with that, message me uh, privately, Messenger, Instagram, email, and I'll help you with, with all of it. <laughs> I 
Honeydew. Sure, why not? Here's Honeydew in all of her splendor. You can see those purple hues. And you really can't tell. She has like deep orange in the middle of her back, like bright orange. The top of her head has a lot of patterning. Kind of like, who's that guy from the Marvels that can snap his fingers and like the whole world changes or whatever? Kind of reminds me of that guy. I don't know why. But again, this, this lighting that I have in this room makes everything look yellow. So just pretend that she's orange and uh, that'll, that's what she looks like. Let's see what she looks like down here. They, they usually look better down, down, in the, down lower, but I've been feeding these guys a lot too and they're, they're growing good. All right, we got to put her back because I got to clean the other geckos home. But that's Honeydew. Any of these geckos were really named by Brooke. Now here's another really cool gecko. You can see another tangerine that has full red eyes. It's really hard to see the fullness of the red, but this gecko is Eclipse tangerine and its eyes are very red. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna keep breeding the Eclipse and the tangerine uh, geckos together over and over again until we get tangerine eclipses that are fairly orange. Again, eclipse is a gene that reduces orange, so that's why it's tough. And it's gonna take many years of selective breeding to get the best quality oranges mixed with eclipse. Blizzard, a blizzard and a super snow, you would actually get 100% snow babies, just a single copy snow baby, and they would all be het for blizzard. That's what you would get. I love cleaning adults. They don't poo as much as babies, and therefore... I don't have to constantly run to the shower and, and scrub out their tub. It is awesome. Watch me jinx myself and now like the rest of them are just like stain dirty. Mm. Oh, gotta turn my notifications off. So I had heard a long time ago that it's possible that if you breed a Max Snow and a Gem Snow or a Max Snow and a Tug Snow that you could create a super form. I don't remember which one it's for because I don't work with Gem or Tug. But if you breed a Max Snow to a Tug Snow, basically half the babies will be Max Snow and half the babies will be Tug Snow. I'm not sure if you'll exactly be able to know which babies are which because the snows are similar enough to where you might not be able to accurately identify them. <laughs> the gecko is in its water bowl. The last gecko we cleaned is just sitting in its water bowl. It's so funny. Kind of love leopard geckos. Got to love them. Feed them a lot. That way they grow. Oh, you guys can't see. My bad. It's another nice, nice tangerine. Hello, Hector. Sorry if I'm missing some people's comments or questions. I'm 
trying to look on my computer, which is off to the side, but it's kind of far to see and questions come fast. And I try to go back over like now while you guys can look at the gecko and then see. So Tug Snow and Max Snow, geckos are life is saying that you can make a super snow, but then you won't know which snow is in which, right? So, oh, leopard geckos. I plan to make a video on this. Leopard geckos absolutely 100% make the best beginner pets. They honestly require the least amount of care out of any gecko species you can get. And Wally from Supreme Gecko is going to argue that crested geckos are easier to keep. But here's the thing about crested geckos. You have to keep them humid. If you don't spray in their tub once every day or once every couple days, then they start to dry out and things start to go bad. Whereas with a leopard gecko, you could literally not spray that, that gecko and it'll be fine. You know, it might have like a rough shed or something. Um, obviously, I'm not promoting that you shouldn't spray them. Because as you see, I have a humid hide in every single leopard gecko tub. It's absolutely crucial. All right, so don't twist my words. Humid hides are absolutely crucial to leopard gecko success. Otherwise, you're going to have a gecko that's stressed out. It can't shed properly. It's got stuck shed on its fingers and all that kind of stuff. Especially as babies. Babies can easily lose the tips of their toes and fingers um, if they're if they don't have a humid place to retreat to, so I'm not saying humidity is not important for a leopard gecko. What I am saying is it's not as important as for a crested gecko. We're, we we got to do round two. Wally invited me to do round two. If you haven't seen my live stream with Wally from Supreme Gecko, he's basically an OG that focuses on crested geckos, and we had a debate one day on his live stream about. Leopard gecko versus crested gecko. Which one is better? But honestly, guys, I just love how leopard geckos are little hunters, right? Crested geckos are more fruit eaters. You don't get to observe them as much. Leopard geckos, you get to observe them hunting. You get to observe them like being like little dinosaurs. So that's what I really love about leopard geckos. Um, they also come in more genetic variety in colors and mutations. So that's fun. And they're easier to keep than crested geckos. I'll just go out there and say it. So, um, leopard geckos, number one best pet reptile for anybody to enter the hobby with. Number one. Here's a nice little one. This one is not as orange as the other ones, but it has these cool, like, purplish stripes going down the side. And it still has a lot of emerine green influence um, undertones in its body. So I think this one is actually for sale on the website.
my wife was playing some music stuff in the bedroom and uh, I had to close the door because I didn't want what happened last night where YouTube deleted our live stream. I didn't want them to, to do it again. So actually after this gecko cleaning, I'm probably going to hit the last questions up and then um, take a break or yeah, disconnect the stream for now because I'm going to go grab some food and then get back to cleaning in a little bit. But it was really fun. And this live stream did really well, even though it was earlier on in the day. I wasn't sure, you know, how usually earlier live streams, they don't do as well as the later ones. But this one did really well. Consistent 23 people in here now, a consistent 15 to 20 people throughout the whole thing. That's amazing. Now, if you do want to see a good quality orange gecko that um, I'm the, the, the type of orange that I'm talking about, you could go onto our YouTube shorts. I made a YouTube short. So you could go into our video history, watch our YouTube short. It says um, shiny, like the crab shiny from Moana song. And um, it gives you a good idea of like one of one of the best quality oranges that I saw today while I was cleaning. And just kind of, you know, that that stuff. But let's see. <clears throat> what questions can I? That's so cool. Thank you so much, Geckos RS. Thank you for the compliment. Oh, wow. On my phone, I'm way behind on comments. That's why I was commenting on something from, like, way earlier. But uh, Feeding and cleaning for leopard geckos. Another reason why they um, make great beginner pets, technically, okay? There's many different ways to do things. But technically, a leopard gecko can easily, easily thrive and survive being fed food once a week like a bowl of mealworms like we do where it can go and and for a couple of days in a row eat all of that stuff eat um and fresh water once a week okay they need a humid hide so that they can shed and that only gets sprayed once a week so every single one of our geckos like you could see here with me every every single one of our geckos gets taken care of once a week <clears throat> and they do fantastic. Our babies are growing faster than ever. They're healthy. Our breeders are doing great. This is all you need for leopard geckos. That's another reason why I think that they make a great beginner pet. Because literally, if you were to get in a car accident or go on vacation for two weeks or even three weeks or even a month, they'll be perfectly fine for someone um, to not even come by and have to take care of them. You know. Now, I would recommend somebody coming by to take care of them but in an emergency situation they'll be perfectly fine i had a leopard gecko not eat one time for five months the gecko didn't eat and barely it it, it it barely even lost any weight until about month you know four to five and at that point it just decided to start eating again and it was perfectly fine it wasn't like deathly skinny it started to get skinny like concerningly skinny for me but as soon as i started to get concerned bam it starts eating and puts on weight within a week it's crazy it's, it's just crazy how how easy they are and and how great of a of a reptile they are so no male blizzards for sale sorry um i don't work with too many blizzards we do have some diablo blancos that are breeding 
but no successful eggs from them just yet. Yeah, we have about 350 leopard geckos this year. We'll be selling some. Next year's goal is to produce somewhere between 750 to 800 geckos. Hi, Hockey. We see you. Hello. Oh, yeah, I forgot you're that young, Apex. It's all right. Don't worry about it. You know, people will come and and uh, spam or whatever. That's okay. So Brenda asks, do you need uh, food constantly available for the leopard geckos? I have one that is a little overweight, but I feel bad. No, that's a good point. When I put my geckos on a diet, I might feed them. So it, I feed all the geckos once a week, right? If I put the gecko on a diet, normally a gecko is eating anywhere between, an adult leopard gecko is eating anywhere between 40 to 80 mealworms a week, depending if it's in breeding season and depending if it's a female. If a gecko is overweight, I will feed it literally like five or 10 mealworms a week. And sometimes I won't even feed them that week. And that's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Just give them their calcium supplementation and their vitamins even without the food and you'll be okay. I sell geckos three to four. Um, the, the earliest that I sell babies is somewhere around three weeks. But uh, if you want to be a little bit more safe, you could push four to five weeks. Um, and, and I just make sure that the gecko is visually growing and healthy and where it should be before I send it off. But to be 100% honest, if you really, really wanted to, you could even sell them earlier than that, especially if they're showing good signs. But I think three to four weeks is a good, um, it's, it's kind of a good marker, right? So art of war, what are good food cups to keep worms inside of? Go to rainbowmealworms.com. I always advertise for Rainbow Mealworms. They're my number one favorite company. They have great customer service. Uh, um, you can buy your mealworms from Rainbow Meal. You can buy your food dishes from Rainbow Mealworms. They're called Escape Free Feeder Dishes in the accessories uh, section. And um, they cost 50 cents. They're great. Now, I am going to have to go because um, my phone is dying. Yeet, yeet, yeah, we we see you, hockey. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can ban him or whatnot. I try not to shun anybody away, you know. So I know it's super annoying. We're about to end this stream, so I'll, you know, whatever. We love you, hockey. God loves you. That's true. If you block them, I wonder if um. You guys can see his messages. That'll be good to know for future reference, though. Leopard gecko breeding season tends to be... It tends to start in December for most geckos, and then it lasts for about four months. So females will tend to start ovulating either in December, January, February, March... April, that's typically when females will start to ovulate and then they will lay eggs for usually about a three-month period or so. Um, but technically, females can ovulate any time of year. So, <laughs> Now, just to be 100% honest, I was a stubborn, annoying um, brat of a kid at times, right? So I understand. I get it. And I know that like God still received me. God still loved me. So I try to give that love uh, back to others. It does hit a certain level, right? Where eventually you will get banned and I will shut your messages off. But if I could withstand it, then I'll try to withstand it as much as possible. Um, that, that's typically how I try to do. But um, if you block them, you won't see their messages. But if you need a mod, I have experience moderating stream chats. Just okay, yeah, definitely. I'll let you know. 
Now the question is if if I don't block him, can you guys still see the messages? That's the question. Or if you block him, will will his messages not not show? See, he's just trying to beat us in typing. He's just a little competitive, that's all. I had a female lay eggs that was only 35 to 40. Yeah, that can be a little bit dangerous. If a female is only 35 grams, um, she can um, lose a lot of weight throughout her, her, her year and potentially it could become life-threatening. I had a bunch of females this year that I bred between 34 grams and 40 grams and um, they did perfectly fine. They continued to grow, but there was this one female that was, it was an expensive Black Knight female, our best quality one, which is why I wanted to breed her early. Um, I started um, breeding that gecko, I, I want to say around 38 to 40 grams, and she got skinnier and skinnier, and it started to concern me. So I stopped, re I did not repair her anymore, and I just fed her, and I hoped that she reabsorbed, and she did reabsorb, but she did give us one good baby which I will show you guys next time and hopefully is a male and hopefully is a great baby. But, um, yeah, we'll go over, we'll, we'll try to go over like, um, banning and blocking messages next time and that kind of stuff so that we can do that. We'll also, you know, consider it moderators and stuff like that if need be, but yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, Female leopard geckos, if you don't mate them, they can still lay infertile eggs and sometimes even fertile eggs. Reptiles have been known to uh, lay fertile eggs even without a male. So it's really, really interesting. That's extremely rare. I would not rely on that. But I don't focus on line bred snows like Tug and Gem. I just focus on Max snows. Uh, I'm okay with Max snow. I like Max snow. It to um, so for right now I just work with Max Snow, but in time as I work more with like Tug and Gem possibly I can give more input to that. But um, thank you guys so much for being here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and and end the live stream there. It was really great seeing all you guys here earlier on our uh, live streams than we normally do, and and seeing some people that haven't been able to make our past live streams. Thank you so much for the $10 super chat. I love you guys. I really appreciate you guys. Keep an eye out um, for our next live stream and just message me personally if you got any problems or questions that you would like to talk about. So let me see here. I have a galaxy. He's 17 grams looking female. Um, so I'll have to confirm, but I usually wait about four to five months before the, the gecko can be... Um, identified as as male or female it might even take six months um, I'll, I'll have that number down a little bit better this year because this year we have hundreds of babies like 300 babies and I'll let you know when I was able to tell gender on them but they were all incubated for female pretty much so unless they start showing male signs they're all just going to keep looking female um, but generally I would like to say with my knowledge right now you're looking at four to six months before you can accurately identify a male or a female and you'll be looking for those v-shaped pores so if you don't know what those look like google male versus female leopard gecko and man those v-shaped pores you can't miss them once a leopard gecko is um of age and you're probably looking at i want to say you're probably looking at five months maybe um you could tell a little bit earlier i've never really worried too much to try to tell earlier um but I'll be keeping an eye out this season so I can try to see, hey, when's the earliest that I've ever seen pores on a leopard gecko? But next season is really the season to, to do that because next season we're going to incubate hundreds of male leopard geckos to get the best of the best males. This year we incubated for the best of the best females. Next year we're going to incubate for the best of the best males. And I'll be able to have a good uh, pool of um, geckos to let you know how quickly males show those little um, V-shaped pores. So, I've heard of Albi snows, but I've never heard of line bred snow before. So I'll definitely have to uh, learn more about that along with you. I'm also the guy that DM'd you on Instagram with the chocolate snow. Okay, yeah. It's always good to connect people on, on the different platforms and, and meet them. So really cool. But 
Thank you guys so much again. I think I heard Platinum Morph. I think I heard it from uh, the Urban Gecko. But again, a lot of people just come up with fancy names for, you know, the what a gecko actually is, like a combo of morphs. Um, I'd, I think I looked at Platinum last night, actually, and it was nothing special. In my eyes, it was nothing special. It was... It was like an albino. It was like an albino tug snow or something like that. And um, sorry, I shouldn't say that it's not special because some of you guys might have platinums. But what I mean is, it's not special on the level that, oh wow, is this like a two thousand dollar animal? No, it's it's a hundred dollar animal. It's a couple hundred dollar animal, maybe. It's simply just a tug snow. Um, and a um, an albino, I, I believe, is what it is. So, yeah, send me photos through Facebook anytime you guys need to um, ask me questions. I can always you can always find me on Facebook. Yeah, learning about leopard geckos is great. Um, there are some things that you will just learn along the way, right? But wow, Holland, really cool. That's great to see. You just missed our stream, but please rewatch it if you get the chance. It's a two-hour stream. We covered some cool topics and showed some great geckos. And if you have any further questions, um, send me a, a message on Facebook or Instagram, all at Geeky Gecko Creations, and I will get back to your questions as soon as I can. So I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. I'm going to go ahead and end the stream there. But I will see you guys in the next stream. And gecko on. Have a geeky gecko great day or night, guys. See you next time. Bye.